Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel at Rabel Stock Research. Uh, so I want to go back to my old friend, MACD. And as many of you know, and I've talked about on the show, I've used MACD. This is the longest uh, indicator that I have used, even more than the moving averages, because I used different moving averages back when I was starting. But one of the first indicators that I learned uh, through Gerald Appel uh, is the MACD indicator. And so I want to go and let's go ahead and look at this agenda. I want to talk about something specific about MACD, and that's how we use it for, to improve our timing. There's two different choices, essentially. One is the crossover signal uh, that can be useful and also trigger a, a, a specific pattern, price pattern that's developing. Uh, but then there are other times when we want to look to the pinch play and so I want to talk about both of those and when one is the right way to go and when is the other the right way to go. And a lot of it has to do with understanding that we don't necessarily want to get the low price as much as we want to get low risk. Uh, and then once we're done with that, we'll go through the individual symbols that came through. Let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. So I've got the QQQ up and I'm looking at five charts. Uh, this is kind of like my standard five chart look. Uh, in ACP. But I want you to focus in right now. Let's just talk about what I've written down here on the uh, daily chart in the upper right. So there's five different MACD signals that I talk about in my course um, that I think can be useful. All right. We want to know what these are. Um, we need to be able to identify them. I go into detail in the course, but I just want to focus in today on the crossover and the pinch out of these five. So there's a lot of different ways we can use MACD to our advantage, but we, we have to understand that this crossover versus the pinch. So I'm going to use the weekly QQQ and just go through some examples. And let's just start in the upper left and you can see what's developed. In fact, let's just make sure you can see that what happened here is that we actually made a divergence, all right? I'm not talking about the, the standard divergence today, but it just happens to play in this specific pattern. If you notice what happened, we, um, we made a higher high in price and the MACD made a lower high. And then we got the crossover to take place here. And uh, if we look at the way this played out, that crossover took place on this bar right here. All right, so this bar. Now, to me, that's a pretty good signal. We got a crossover signal following a divergence, and we didn't really have a lot of downside follow through. Like if this would have triggered way down here on a crossover, then I'd be saying, okay, I got to put a stop up here. This isn't really a great entry point. But in this case, we're actually triggering here. We can put our stop at the high. We really haven't. It, it's not like this has progressed a lot to the downside. And we're even above the 18 at this time. So to me, this is actually a pretty good crossover signal. Now, if you notice what happened, we actually got a little pinch that developed right after that. We this this rallied up and tested the high. And we got a little tiny narrow range bar with a little minor topping tail. And obviously, that would have even been a better entry, lower risk entry using the little pinch afterwards. But I have no problem with this crossover signal here. Now, if you notice the way this played out, we actually went down and crossed over the zero line. And then we got another pinch. Now, pinch offers a lot of times offers an opportunity near at or near the moving average to give us an entry. Now, the pinch is essentially where we get, we're getting too far away from the signal line and it wants to pinch back in, but it doesn't cross over. It just comes in and kind of alleviates the overbought condition before heading back down again. All right. So we want to be on the lookout for these where we get a strong move to the downside. Because remember, when we get distance between these two lines, that's a sign of momentum. It's a sign of strength. And in this case, it was to the downside. And in this case, it was crossing the zero line. And then we get our first rally. I've done several videos on zero lines, several lessons on zero line reversals. We always want to be on the lookout for the first signal after a zero line reversal and that happened here. Now we get a move to the downside and then we get a crossover to the upside right here. All right. And that actually takes place on this bar. So once again, this is not that bad because look, we made a move up and then we consolidated for three or four days and then we get our trigger here. That's not a bad entry signal, all right? We can see uh, again, if we look at 
where this is taking place. There's the crossover, and we haven't moved up that much. Typically, what I'm trying to do is if we're in bar one or bar two of a move, so I would consider this bar one, and then this is bar two because we basically just consolidated after that. If we're still within bar, the first two bars after the bottom, I still think the crossover is okay. Once we get to three bars up, four bars up, five bars up, I don't really want to buy the crossover anymore, and mainly because our risk – really begins to grow. Now we got to put our stop down here and we've gotten a big move that's taken place. So in this case, this was still okay. Now look at what happened here. We get a move to the downside. It does pause a little bit, but then when crossover takes place on this bar, that's really where this is taking place. To me, that's too late. We're already down and testing the low. The risk reward really isn't all that great in this situation. All right. Now, if we start to move forward, you can see that we get another crossover to the down to the upside here. Now, we made a bottom here and then we get this big bar to the upside. We kind of had a couple bars. It's to me, it's getting a little late. I know we we're making a higher low. It's not a terrible entry. I mean, if we take this crossover signal, it's not terrible, but I'm probably want to wait for the pinch to develop. And you see how we get a pinch here. We get our entry. We can come as it starts to emerge off of this and maybe even wait for it to cross back above the 18. But either way, we've got a much better entry from a risk reward standpoint because we're buying closer to where um, the reversal is taking place. And this pinch, this type of pinch play offers a pretty nice signal. This is another one where we're ha it's happening right near the moving average. You see how we're crossing above the zero line and we're getting a little pinch develop here. That type of pattern, I think, is really attractive. So these are kind of entries where you're not necessarily getting in at the low price. Obviously, this is a lower price, but you're getting a low risk because you're entering right and you could use the maybe moving the moving averages or something like that. You could use that and, and your risk reward is actually pretty high quality. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. We get a drop, we get a drop, we get three bars down and then we get the crossover. I don't really want to do that. Now, forget about the fact that it's still in an uptrend. I'm just talking about the MACD signal itself. Like, do I want to play this crossover? I really don't. I mean, when I look at that, it's just not a good signal because I know I've already moved three days. So if we wait for the pinch to develop, now all of a sudden we're entering here after this is pinched back up. You see how this is rallied? And then we pinch a little bit closer. We get a little minor rally on the MACD as well. And then we can get in here with a much smaller risk reward, a better risk reward equation in our favor. And then we get another move to the upside here. And look at how far you would have had to bought this after it had moved up four or five days in a row. So here's another example of low risk. So here's our pinch and we're making our higher low, right? So we're, we're getting in at a higher price, right? I mean, if we got the crossover signal, we'd be getting in at a lower price when we are here. But to me, this is a lot of risk to take versus this, where if I wait for this to close, I can use the higher pivot low as my entry and essentially, you know, use this as a stop. I probably end up giving a little bit more room anyway. But in this case, just in terms of defining the risk based on the reversal point, I can I can look at this as a single bar risk versus this, which is like a five bar risk. So if you think in those terms, it's always going to improve your timing. I hope this uh, makes sense. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the analysis now. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. Uh, so my services can be found at rablestockresearch.com. Uh, you can check out my courses as well. I've now I'm giving lifetime access to my courses. Um, and also, if uh, you want to get started, you could just uh, start with the book I'm offering at a discount right now. And that's at rablestockresearch.com forward slash book. OK, as we start out with the QQQ, do you want to just point out how um, I like using these five charts together. Now, I get calls from institutional clients asking about individual stocks. I mean, basically, I don't use the hourly when that – they're longer term, so I don't necessarily need the hourly. But these charts here – these four are basically core for uh, looking at you know longer term to intermediate term trends. And so I can see everything all at once. I think it's a huge benefit and something I would definitely recommend is in something that ACP offers you the ability to do is to look at multiple time frames. But also I have the ability. So I have a weekly chart in the bottom right 
with um, ADX, MACD, and my regular moving average. It's my 18 and 40 simple moving average and the volume pattern, right? But I've also got the relative strength up here on a different chart. And I've also got the zigzag defining the price structure, uh, which I think is incredibly helpful as well. And then I've got my RSI uh, 20 and 5 overlaid uh, on here. So I've got a significant amount of information here all on one page. I look at the chart and uh, and I can see pretty much everything I want to see. So when I do this, these reviews of the symbols that come through, I treat it as if someone's calling me, one of my clients is calling me, and I'm going through and giving you my uh, two cents on it. And uh, so I try and be a little bit more thorough on this show just because um, a lot of people are new to this information and want to make sure I give uh, detailed information. All right. So let's just look at the QQQ real quick. What I mentioned last week is how the ADX is dying on uh, the daily chart. ADX was making high, you know moves well above 25, and on this last peak, as we've moved to a new high, the ADX has dropped down below 25. So this, again, is one of the patterns out of my course that I'm on the lookout for. It's an exhaustion pattern. Now, it can play out one of two ways. It could play out in the potential for one more surge to the upside, which would be some kind of a climax, or we could just go ahead and break down and form likely to be the 40 to 18 bounce pattern and have this 18 roll over. And if that happens, then we have a deeper correction. But I'm not all that concerned about some major top as much as uh, you know a short to intermediate term one. The other thing that I think we need to key on is the relative strength here. Do you see what's going on on a relative basis? This is starting to lose a little bit. As this has pushed higher the last few weeks, this has not made a new high on a relative basis. So we've got to be, you got to start watching this because we could see a shift and I'm starting to see it when I go through my individual stocks. A lot of uh, areas other than tech um, that have really been leading the way and have a big influence on the QQQ are starting to show signs of improvement, stuff in the basic materials especially. All right, um, let's move on to the IWM. Uh, so this is what we've been talking about. We've got this relative strength line that just will not kick in. It hasn't been able to get back through its moving average. Um, the encouraging thing is the price pattern is improving. But here's what bugs me a little bit. I'm just going to show you on this weekly chart. You see how we broke out? So we made, we completed the one, two, three reversal. We got a nice green bar. And then look at what happened on the breakout bar. You see a complete indecision bar. That is not what we want to see in terms of follow through to give you confidence that there's there's a lot of strength coming. So it's not surprising to see this being a bad, down week right now, mainly because we didn't get any real follow through in the breakout bar. It's not what we want to see. So it might take a little bit longer for this to get going until it does. I think you still have to be a little bit more cautious um, about what's taking place. I think there's still plenty of ideas, but uh, uh, as I mentioned to my subscribers, the volatility on the daily chart on the S&P is going up. And so we've got to be a little bit more cautious about our entry points for trading. The longer term pattern still looks fine. I'm, I'm more worried about what's taking place in the near term. All right, let's talk about something that hasn't shown. It's just starting to show up this week. Finally, I've been watching this like a hawk because I've got uh, a number of stocks in the copper area that I like to follow. And the other thing that I'm looking at is the fact that the copper, so this is last year's range. And then let me, uh, let me do this. And then here is the range for 22. All right. You see how this is an inside year? So this whole year right here stayed inside the range of 22. So if we can break out above the high of this inside year, which is taking out this high, then we're likely going to see some follow through to the upside. Look at the beautiful base this is formed. Low ADX condition here, low ADX condition here, zero line reversal here. And now we're starting to see some strength show up with this nice breakout. I would go check out some of these copper stocks. There's some pretty uh, interesting action taking place. All right, look at crowd. See CRWD. So I, I think this is interesting because it, what we want to do is, is look at the volatility. I mean, look at the size of these bars. You see the size of these bars? And then we have a nice trend. Look, the momentum is strong, right? There's confirmation in the momentum. But look at what happened. The volume, uh, the, the size of the bars have gone crazy in terms of their size. I don't like that. It's typically a sign of distribution when you get a huge move like that to the upside and then the size of the bars double, triple, quadruple, which is what essentially is starting to take place here. So 
when I see that in an individual stock, I'm thinking uh, distribution. Now, I I do. This is one of the things I talk about in my new course, which is, uh, but I only use that on the S and P. And there's some specific things I'm looking for in the S and P volatility uh, that would tell me that we've got to be a little bit more cautious. That's actually taking again. It's taking place on the daily chart. But in this one, I would probably be looking to take some profits. I I, I don't necessarily want to sell the whole thing. I might still trail a stop, but I would if I haven't taken any profits yet. I think. Based on what I'm seeing, I'd want to do that. All right, let's look at Schlumberger. This is interesting because um, if we look at what's going on in the monthly chart, we've had a pretty good correction in energy. But look, we've got rising moving averages here. This still looks really good. These are parallel. Um, we've got strong momentum characteristics based on the ADX. And then look at what just clicked in. We've got a higher low in price and a lower low here. So this is the reverse divergence that I outlined in the lesson. I, well, at least I mentioned in the lesson is one of the patterns um, that I talk about. So it's a good one to know. And that's a positive here. That The fact that these moving averages are rising and we've got a reverse divergence. Now, we've got to go look at the weekly chart for the entry. And to me, this is a lot of overrun here. So typically what I like to look for is some kind of a higher low to form. We've broken the downtrend line. Now let's see this kind of form some kind of a higher bottom. We had a little bit too much strength in the sellers here. You can see the selling strength. We want to see a little bit of improvement in the green DI um, as this is making a higher low. But uh, And I might go check out something like Halliburton HAL. I think that looks like a little bit stronger to me. Um, if I'm interested in this oil service area. Um, okay, look at BK. So the strength of this move is well defined by the ADX. Now, MACD is confirming as well. It's made a new high, made a strong move. We had the separation here, right? But when I look at this ADX, I mean, it's just telling me we reached almost 50 and it's way up there. Um, green DI has a significant separation away from red DI, meaning the buyers are much stronger than the sellers. I think this is intriguing. Now, the fact that this has rolled over a little bit tells me that there's a pretty good chance this is going to work its way back a little bit closer to the 18 week before it's ready to go. But right now on the daily chart, we're, we're working our way back down to the zero line and we have low ADX. So you almost have to draw a horizontal line here. <clears throat> I think this has to break out if this is going to trigger on the daily. If I'm going to play this off the daily, I basically have to get a new breakout to a new high because of the way it's played out. It's a trigger one, um, but it's not it, to me. It just needs um, I'd actually like to see it spend another week going sideways. And then if we can break out from there, this will look pretty good. But I, it's one that would be on my list um, because I, I love the strength of the uh, ADX. Now, BAC is a little bit different. Um, you've got a pretty nice reversal pattern that has developed. We broke the trend line. We actually undercut. So we, we could change this trend line to this. And then we broke it and we got our pullback. And now we're trying to emerge again. But look at how we're improving on an on a ADX basis as well here. Um, I think what I'd be looking for is maybe a little bit of a pullback towards the 18 day and see if that can hold. I mean, I, overall, this pattern looks pretty good. Things are improving. The relative strength is improving. The momentum signs are improving. So I could definitely be uh, interested in this on maybe a little bit of a pullback. OK, INZY. Uh, so I don't really like the reaction to earnings here. This this was kind of a nasty little pullback. But um, if you're interested in this bigger picture reversal, you could. So there's one or two ways to play it. Either you make it get through this red bar to the upside, right? I mean, literally make it uh, break out here and get through. That's really where it failed on this rally. So you make it do that. That's one choice. The other choice is you get a pullback here and then you actually get a opposing trend trigger. Now, if that's going to happen, it's going to take a little bit of time. I don't think this is going to turn on a dime here if it's turning up that way. So it's probably a couple weeks, two to four weeks away. But you could play it as sort of like a probe and say, OK, I think this is going to turn to the upside. I, to me, it's a little risky just based on the abrupt reversal off the earnings and the failure at that prior bar. OK, let's look at IBM. So IBM was one that I talked about a lot uh, to my subscribers. It was very abrupt. It had the nice breakout play and had a really quick reversal of higher low that formed. So if we're looking for our next entry here, 
um, I think you've got to take into account the monthly, right? The monthly, this has made a big move away from the 18 month line. It's still kind of stretched away from the 18 weeks. I don't think I'd look for a little higher low or pullback on the daily chart. I think I'd be waiting for the RSI on the uh, daily to get down to 50 or lower and then look to play it. So play this off the weekly chart at this point. I don't know that I want to play it off the daily based on how far this has moved. Um, so got to be a little bit more careful on stocks that have made big moves like this. And um, now this is a monster breakout, right? This is this has been a long, long time coming, years and years getting through 150. Try to get through 150, now it finally has. So I think there's a lot of upside in this. So I don't want you to think, uh, get me wrong on it. I'm interested in buying a pullback in this. I just want to get an entry where I can be a little bit more comfortable and not feel like, you know, I'm trading it. Because I think if you did it off the daily chart, you'd have to treat it as a trade. Um, okay, so the CNBS, the cannabis uh, area. So we didn't quite make it through the 18-month line. You see how it tried and now it's back below? So we got to be a little bit more cautious about this. Now, we have pulled back to the 18 and the 40, but we didn't break out. So keep an eye on price structure. Do you see how the price structure is not reversed? We have not flipped anything yet. So it's still a pretty aggressive play below the 18-month and haven't turned the trend. So in other words, if we had made a move like this and then we made a higher high and then we're making a higher low, then I would be a lot more interested in this. But the fact that it was kind of a double top, you know, is um, is a little less appealing to me. Now, here's what I'll tell you. The volume pattern has improved. You see how all these red volume bars, look at the size of these. This, this is all distribution. We've flipped from distribution to accumulation. You see now we're getting green bars showing up. I like that, but I think we need to break out. I think we got to get through this. Make it do something a little bit more meaningful. See if we can't get a big green bar coming up through that rather than trying to pre-guess um, the reversal. Okay, uh, now emerging markets is definitely showing signs of improvement. You see how this is getting back above the 18-month line? This line's starting to flatten out for the first time. In fact, the MACD did hold on this pullback. It was a pinch play off the low, testing major support. All right, so that's the monthly. If we look at the weekly, look at this nice, quiet basing pattern. I love quiet basing. That's a sign of accumulation. We've got a low ADX condition. We just need some strength here. We need a breakout to take place. And I would say the earliest uh, trend line you could use, well, you, you did break through this, but there's, see how this isn't really the breakout. You see how there's no big green bars or anything? I don't, I just don't see that. We need some follow through. We want to see someone really convinced. The volume is improving, but I want to see a big green bar here. And that would be, um, I think, really intriguing if it plays out that way. But certainly an area I would watch. We haven't seen, so we've got low ADX, low ADX, and low ADX. I'd like to see at least ADX start to kick in on the daily chart and then maybe buy the first pullback. Okay, let's look at the Zebra. So Zebra is getting back above its 18 month and that line is starting to cup around. Also, uh, the MACD is turning above its signal line after getting kind of normalized oversold here. There's not a lot of strength in the seller. So there's certainly signs of improvement here. The only thing I'll say is that we're coming up on some resistance here around 300. So I think what I'd like to do is get a little bit better pullback towards the 18 week. This was really the last entry area. And now we're looking for the next entry area would be a little bit closer to the 18 week line. Remember, that's the location we want to be focused in on is near at or near the 18 on the time frame you want to play. I don't think this is a trade off the daily right now. I think we want to play this off the weekly. Um, we want to get this a little closer on the weekly, and then you could you could actually trigger it off the daily. Uh, but be careful about being a little bit too aggressive with this entry. I, I'd like to get this a little bit. It's just a little too close to resistance, so maybe we can get a little bit closer to support uh, before you uh, try and make an attempt here. Thanks for watching the show today. So if you have any stock requests, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Also, if you have an interest in learning more about MACD and ADX, and multiple time frame analysis, check out my YouTube channel called Invest Like a Pro. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.